Let's now multiply two binomials together. I'm going to give several examples because I'd like you to see some special circumstances. I'm going to show you the long approach at first, and then after that I'm going to go into the, the simple, let's, let's cut to the chase and just go ahead and get this problem done. But when you have a binomial times a binomial, essentially this x has to be multiplied by both of those terms. This is how most of our textbooks write that. That x would have to be multiplied by both the x and the 7, and we would distribute that. This 3 right here, this plus 3, would have to be multiplied by the whole x plus 7 also. And you would go ahead and have x times x is x squared, and x times 7 is 7x. Seven then here, a positive 3 times x is a positive 3x, and a positive 3 times a positive 7 is a positive 21. And finally, um, often it occurs, especially when multiplying two binomials together, if you have like terms, typically in the middle, you would collect those. These are like terms. There's so 7x and 3x for a total of 10x. So this x squared comes down, plus that 10x, plus that 21, and I'm all done. No collecting. There are no terms to be collected here. The product of these two binomials is this trinomial. From now on, I'm going to say to you, let's foil these two binomials. I'm going to erase this step and let you see how I get to this stage by the process of what I call FOIL. And this is how you spell FOIL. FOIL means to take the first terms and multiply them together. x times x is x squared. So the first terms get multiplied together. Next, it says multiply the outside terms. x times a positive 7 is a positive 7x. So you multiply the outside terms together. Next, you multiply what they call the inside of all this mess, if you will. The inside, 3 times x is 3x. So the inside terms. And then the L in FOIL stands for multiplying the last terms together. A positive 3 times a positive 7 is a positive 21. Again, the last terms together. And you're still looking at, you know, the same scenario as the way we set it up in the previous. Um, I will always multiply two binomials using the FOIL process. Let's go ahead and do another one so you can see it and see the like terms that result. So, if I ask you to multiply x minus 5 times x plus 4, x times x is x squared. x times a positive 4 is a positive 4x. A minus 5 times x is a minus 5x. This is a minus 5, a negative 5, plus a negative 5. Negative 5 times a positive 4 is a minus 20. And then these two are like terms. A positive 4 minus 5 is a negative 1x. You do not need to write that minus 1. We typically will write that as a minus x. I'm done. Don't try to be collecting anything here. Let's uh, do one where the first terms in the binomials have coefficients other than 1, like that 4, and this 2x. So I ask you to multiply these two binomials, so you'll FOIL, you'll multiply the first terms together. So 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times a minus 5 is a minus 20x, that's the outside terms. The inner terms are a positive 3 times a positive 2x, that's 6x, and a positive 3 times a minus 5 is a minus 15. And I go ahead and collect those two like terms. A negative 20 plus 6 is a minus 14. And bring everything else, and you have successfully multiplied those two binomials. Let's see, let's go ahead and do one more like that, and then let's do two special circumstances. So let's take 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 5. I'm just trying to change this up a little bit in terms of signs. So these two binomials have both, both have minus signs in between. 
So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times a minus 5 is a minus 10x. A negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9x. And this negative times a negative is a positive 15. And finally, I'll collect these two like terms, and I'm adding two negative numbers. I'm adding a negative 10, and I'm adding a negative 9. For a total of a negative 19, and I'll bring down my first and my last terms, and I've successfully multiplied those two binomials. Watch what happens when the binomials look almost alike, but one of them has a plus sign, and one of them has a minus sign. So they look alike, but they have opposite signs. So let's FOIL this. So x times x is x squared. x times a minus 7 is a minus 7x. And a positive 7 times x is a positive 7x. And this positive 7 times a minus 7 is a minus 49. When you multiply these two types of binomials together, what I call the outer and the inner terms that are like terms, they add together to be zero. Minus 7x plus 7x is nothing. And all you're left with in this particular circumstance is this x squared and this minus 49. That's a special um, product, multiplying two binomials together where they are the sum and difference of like terms. From now on, if you could, just go right to the answer instead of having to do all that work. So if you have x minus 3 times x plus 3, and you wanted to multiply those two together, the x times the x is x squared. I don't write down this 3x and this minus 3x because they collect and add to be 0. So I just write down my last term, a minus 3 times a positive 3 is a minus 9, and I'm done with it. You can, in any of these problems, skip those steps. Um, if you can add the inner and the outer terms in your head, just be awfully careful, though, there, so that you don't make a mistake. Um, finally, let's just do, um, while we're here, one more. If I ask you to take uh, a binomial, and square it. All I want you to be aware of is that I'm asking you to take that binomial and multiply it times itself. I feel it's very important that you write down the binomials twice and do the foiling process. Because oftentimes, let's get that first term, people don't get this 7x and that 7x, which add to be 14x, here we have a 49. The solution to this problem is x squared plus 14x plus 49. Often people look at this problem and they just say, oh, I'm going to take x and square it and get x squared, and a positive 7 and square it and get a positive 49. And that is not the answer. So if a binomial is squared, please write it down twice so you don't miss that 14x in the middle.